the other big story this morning, big upset out in the East, Orlando and Milwaukee game one. Nobody gave the Magic much of a shot except for the Magic. Nikola Vucevic going off for a playoff career high 35 points to go along with 14 rebounds. And though Giannis did finish 31-17-7, and seven, the Greek freak held without a field goal over the final 11 minutes of this game. That ain't great, said Nick. Magic stunned the Bucks by a 122-110 to 110 final to steal game one. Nick, nobody saw this coming. How shocking was this upset? Oh, it was a shocking upset. But, you know, because we treat the Bucks with rationality and reason, unlike the Lakers, no one's going to ask if they should be nervous this morning. And they, of course, shouldn't be nervous this morning. I, the, the, I am, I'm old enough to remember all the way back to the last postseason when Orlando walked into <laughs> Toronto and beat the Raptors. And it shook them so much to their core that they went on to win the title. Now, that doesn't mean Milwaukee's got nothing to clean up here. And if I'm Milwaukee, there are two things that stick out to me, Antoine, as teaching points, if you will. One is the reason they were so dominant in the regular season, as great as Giannis was on offense, was because how great they were defensively. And they, have been, they yeah. were a bad defensive team by their standards in the seeding games, and they were not good defensively yesterday. The other point of minor concern, Antoine, is usually in a game like this, when the underdog jumps out to a huge lead, if the overwhelming favorite gets back in it, the underdog folds. And early in the third quarter, the Bucks made this a one-point game after being down around 20, and you had to think, okay, Orlando's going to roll over. And Orlando didn't roll over and then extended that lead back. And so that maybe is a sign of things to come in the series that Orlando's got no quit in them. But I am at, for this series, I am not concerned for Milwaukee at all. But they got to get that defense better, Antoine, for the following series. Well, first I want to stop. You got to give Orlando Magic a lot of credit. Um, they played great. They had six guys in double figures. Um, they shot the three ball. They made 16 threes yesterday. Got great bench production. I thought. DJ Augustine and Terrence Ross were tremendous um, yesterday off the bench. So they played great. They deserved to win the game. Jumped out on Milwaukee, hit, punched them first. The things that concern me about the Bucs is this kind of just like the Lakers. I don't like their rotation. When you're playing 11, 12, 13 guys come playoff time, that bothers me. And that comes from not having much to play for in the bubble, um, not taking the bubble as serious as other teams, and kind of cruising through it. And now it's time to play, and you're not set with your rotations because you've played 11, 12 guys. They got to tighten it up. This is a team that has championship aspirations. They've been there last year. They got, you know, obviously losing the game seven. They got to get the mentality back that, hey, we're trying to win a championship. You can't make everybody happy. Chris Middleton has to be much better than he was yesterday. This is a 50 40 90 guy. It's an all star. He has to bring it now. It's time for him to take his game to the next level. Giannis was okay. Uh, he could be better. I know his numbers look really, really good, but he has to be better down the stretch. He has to get to the foul line. He has to be able to create for them, to give them opportunities to score in late games. He didn't come through. Brooke Lopez has to be a lot better, too, as well. But it's a couple of things. I, I still believe the Bucs are going to win this series. Um, they probably just made a six, seven game series, um, which they may need to get their rhythm, to get their aggressiveness back and get back to play the way they was playing before this pandemic. Hey, Antoine, um, do you think both number one seeds losing exposes a flawed strategy from the number one seeds of just like the Lakers saying, hey, we just want to go in healthy. And then Nick's like, ah, they lost the first quarter. What are you going to do? And then the Bucks basically giving the Grizzlies that game and the Grizzlies go in and try to almost knock off the Blazers. I feel like the number one seeds coasted and now they're paying the price. Do you see it the same way? Yes. No, I, I think, yeah, you coasted. I, I do agree with that a little bit. I'm not going to say that's 100%. But when you, you want to be playing your best basketball going into the playoffs. And one thing that Adam Silver and the NBA did a great job of is setting up this bubble atmosphere where you play eight games. And a lot of teams wanted to get to that, the playoffs healthy. They did not want to take it as serious. And they worked hard enough where they didn't have to take it as serious. But the two number one seeds are hurting right now because they don't have an eight, nine-man rotation come playoff time. 
they're, they're searching right now um, to find out who's going to be on the floor. Um, their energy and effort is not there right now. So those things did play a part. And you see teams like, obviously, Orlando, they were in the playoffs, but they had to play meaningful games. Then you obviously, Portland, every game they played was meaningful. And, and it shows. That's why yeah. those, those teams were able to win game one of the playoffs. I, mm -hmm. it, wild. Uh, my, my pushback would be it is the, the reason that Milwaukee and the Lakers, one of the reasons they took the approach in the seeding games they did was to get to the postseason healthy. Now, obviously, there is the potential downside of you might have game one of the playoffs be a little rusty, but the upside is it's not, oh, look, we're going to be without Anthony Davis or Chris Middleton for six weeks because they it, sprained an MCL. So they, I, think it's, I, I think it's a bit of a, a, a false, no, I don't want to say false question, but it, it's a bit of a... a I, an unknown as far as well had they played harder had they taken it more seriously would they have been sharper yeah but they also might have been totally screwed because somebody gets their knee twisted up and one of their top guys is out so i i, I think we've got to recognize why they did it the way they did it and I, I heard antoine said that this thing could go six or seven if orlando takes the buck seven they should be very concerned I don't see that happening. I don't think Orlando's going to win another game in this series. But if that happens, then you must reevaluate Milwaukee and whether it's just rust and lack of attention to detail. But, Jenna, I don't, I don't see Orlando winning two more in this series. I don't see them winning one more in this series. So there's this interesting aspect after the game. Giannis talked about being away from home and the impact that the bubble has had on not only Giannis, but the entire team, even though all the teams are in the bubble. Take a listen to what Giannis had to say. We play a game, uh, or we have a practice, and um, obviously we're in the bubble, we don't get to go home. We don't get to go, you know, be away from basketball, even for a few hours. Uh, you know, if uh, things were normal, we'd be back home playing in our, our home court, and uh, after the game, we go home. We go and spend time with our families, Watch a movie, eat your you know favorite food, sleep in your own bed. You just you're just comfortable, you know. Uh, but now it just feels like we always at work. Uh, you can you cannot escape basketball. But at the end of the day, personally, you know it is what it is. Uh, but everybody's going through this. Yeah, Antoine. <laughs> you know who else doesn't get to go home and sleep in their own bed and who's always at work? Everyone else in the bubble. Uh, what did you think about what Giannis had to say there, Antoine? Man, I'm so disappointed. I, I, I love Giannis. He's probably going to be a two-time MVP, and it's disheartening to hear him say that because I know me. I've been. I played in the playoffs. I was very fortunate to win an NBA title in the league. I didn't want any family around come playoff time. I used to book my family and friends and put them in a hotel. I wanted to be at home by myself. I wanted to be locked in for the playoffs. All I want to do is eat, sleep, basketball. And in this bubble, you got an opportunity to do that. For him to say that you want to worry about sleeping in your own bed and your family, that's not, that's not the time for family and sleeping in your own bed. This is about playing basketball. This is about being locked in. You're watching other teams play. You're watching film. You want no distractions at all. So for him to take that approach really bothers me. But that's the thing now. You're on neutral courts. Some guys need to play at home. Some guys need that home crowd. Somebody needs, some guys need that energy. And that's maybe what the Bucks missed yesterday. They played at 12 o'clock. Let me tell Giannis. Giannis, you're the one seed. You're playing the Orlando Magic. You're going to play at 12 o'clock. You're going to play on NBA TV. You're not going to be on national TV. It's unfortunate. You are the number one seed. You're in small markets. You're not going to get them TV ratings, so they're going to play you at 12 o'clock. You got to figure out the, your own energy. You got to come out with it. Those things are not going to be there for you. It's going to be a tougher road playing at 12 o'clock than, say, other teams that get to sleep in and play at 730. Those are the type of things you got to just block out your mind and play basketball. But I wanted to play basketball at this time, Nick, all the time. I didn't want no family or friends around come playoff time. Reach, Antoine. Dame Lillard couldn't help but dance in the Blazers' win last night. What's up? Want to know why? Oh Take a listen. Uh, okay. They played a uh, they played the East Oakland anthem, so it was only right that I acknowledged the East Oakland anthem and go dumb for a second, and that was it. 